Welcome to the second video on the reactions of alkynes. This video will pick up with hydration of alkynes. The hydration reaction is a little bit different with alkynes than it was with the alkenes. The first step, however, is similar. Alkynes are able to undergo acid-catalyzed Markovnikov hydration. This process is catalyzed by the mercury sulfate, so it's similar to oxymercuration demercuration. The reason we use mercury sulfate is because we're going to form a vanillic carbocation. Remember, that is a double bond with a positive charge, which is not very stable. So we need to be a little more aggressive. So the reagents that we're going to use to pull this reaction off completely are sulfuric acid, water, and mercury sulfate. And it takes our alkyne molecule into this enol, enol, and then that quickly tautomerizes into the ketone. So the first step of the reaction adds the OH to the more substituted carbon and the H to the least substituted carbon. So that first step is still Markovnikov, but then in this case, we go to the ketone because this reaction has acid in it. This tautomerization is catalyzed by acid. A little more information about tautomerization that we were talking about. Tautomerization can happen under acid conditions, which I'll show on this slide, or base conditions, which I'll show in just a second. And this process is actually called ketoenol tautomerization. We start with the enol here. In an acid, we are going to protonate. So the nucleophilic double bond reaches out and adds a proton right here. And that forms a carbocation here. And then we have resonance structures possible in our intermediate, where we can have that positive charge move from the carbon up onto the oxygen. And then in the final step, we're going to have another proton transfer, where our conjugate base of this original acid, then deprotonates that proton right there, providing us a ketone. And very typically, the ketone is favored, and that's why this reaction happens. Based catalyzed tautomerization, it's the same reaction, but this time we're using a base. So here's our enol. In the first step, we're going to have the base pull off the proton, creating this negatively charged oxygen, which then has resonance structures. That negative charge on the oxygen can be shared with this carbon right here. And so in that case, the nucleophilic anion here of the carbon reaches out and gets proton with the conjugate acid of our base, giving us the aldehyde or ketone. Now we know the two ways that we can have tautomerization happen. Let's look at the second hydration of an alkyne reaction. This reaction is hydroboration oxidation, very similar to the one that we use for the alkene. So we have non-Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition, and it produces an aldehyde. We have our alkyne. Here's the reagents that we need. In the first step of this reaction, we have BH3 and THF. And then we have, in our second step, hydrogen peroxide in base. That allows us to create the non-Markovnikov addition of an alcohol. Our OH goes on the carbon with the most Hs, and our H goes on the carbon with the most carbons. So that's non-Markovnikov. But then this quickly tautomerizes to make the aldehyde. Because there is base in the second step, this tautomerization is catalyzed by base. For this reaction, if we use BH3, we can actually get an undesired product by having two successive reactions. In order to prevent that, we are going to use a different reagent, a special reagent here, which is called the dialkyl borane, which is very similar to BH3, except for we have these two larger carbon groups. This is called diisoamyl borane. And in this case, we have the BH here and then this bicyclic compound. Both of these reagents can be used to provide the steric hindrance that is needed in order to prevent that second addition. And so typically what you're going to see when you see this reaction written is we'll have our alkyne and then we'll have in the first step diisoamyl borane and then in the second step we'll have that peroxide and base giving us the non-Markovnikov addition of an alcohol which ultimately tautomerizes into the aldehyde. So a quick summary of those two reactions. For a terminal alkyne we have Markovnikov hydration gives us a ketone, and that is using the mercury catalyst. We have non-Markovnikov addition giving us an aldehyde, and that is with the boron compound. If we have an alkyne that is not terminal, in other words, it's internal, so we have four carbons in a row, there's really no difference between either of these two carbons in terms of substituents, and so our OH can add to either one in both of these reactions. And so both the mercury catalyzed Markovnikov Markovnikov reaction and the boron reagent non-Markovnikov reaction 
will yield a mixture of products in which the OH goes here and here, and there's really no preference one way or the other. So it's always going to be a mixture of products with both of these reactions. Halogenation of alkynes is the next reaction. Remember with the alkene, we added Br2 and we get two Brs added. Well, with the alkyne, we end up adding four. So we have this tetra halide product. This works with chlorine and bromine. If, however, we want to stop it at the alkene, we can add a single equivalent of our Br2 or our Cl2, and we end up with a majority of our product being the trans product and then the minor product being the syn product, but we do stop at the alkene and we have a halogen on each of those carbons. Ozonolysis is the next reaction. And if you can remember with ozonolysis of an alkene, we cut that bond in half and formed two ketones and or aldehydes. With the alkyne, this oxidative cleavage is going to create two carboxylic acids instead. And so if you remember with the alkene, I said you just draw a line down here. So we have R1 with a C, and now we're just going to put a carboxylic acid there, and R2 with a C, and we're going to put a carboxylic acid there. That is what happens when you have an alkyne that undergoes ozonolysis. So again, this reaction is for an internal alkyne, we will get two carboxylic acids. This carbon right here is this carbon right here, or this one, the way I've drawn it. And this carbon right here is here or here, the way I've drawn it. And so an internal alkyne will give you two carboxylic acids. If it is, however, on a terminal alkyne, then we end up with one carboxylic acid and CO2 as the side product. So this carbon right here is this carbon right here. And then this carbon right here is this carbon here. So you can see how that works. Now, finally, the new stuff that we were talking about. Alkynes are different if you have that terminal alkyne because that proton is acidic right here. So review from earlier in the chapter, we have a strong base, can pull out that proton, giving us this alkanide ion. And now I've said, I've hinted already that this is going to be a great nucleophile. And absolutely, if you look at the bottom of the slide here, we have this nucleophile that is going to do SN2 reaction with this alkyl halide, creating a new carbon-carbon bond, which is huge. So to go a little deeper into this reaction, just like is in all SN2 substitutions, we're going to want methyl and or primary halides to be our reagents that react with our alkanide. So we start off with our terminal alkyne. In the first step, we treat it with NaNH2, which is going to create create the ion. And then that ion is going to react in an SN2 manner with this carbon right here, backside attack, kicking it out. And here's our product. And right here is the new carbon-carbon bond that was formed. Lucky for us, this acetylene C2H2 molecule can actually undergo this reaction twice. So we can add some group we'll call R to one side of the alkyne, and we can add a second R group to the other side of the alkyne. So this makes it even more versatile. And now in this situation, we've created two new carbon-carbon bonds. Imagine the possibilities. If you wanted to put two different groups on acetylene, we're gonna have to do that reaction in two different steps. So we react one equivalent, NaNH2, and then we're going to add an ethyl group to that side. And then in a second step, we have one equivalent of NH2 to pull the proton on the other end of the alkyne off. And then we're going to react it with this reagent, with the methyl group. This is often a very important step for the beginning of synthesis. So if we talk about synthetic strategies that we've learned in this chapter so far, we have the alkyne that we start with. We can use hydrogenation to get to the alkane, and that's just H2 over some catalyst, we can create the cis double bond or the trans double bond using either Lindlar's catalyst or sodium in ammonia that gets to the alkene. And then remember, we could take that alkene right to the alkane using hydrogen and a metal catalyst. Some additional things that we can do, we have an alkene, we can take it to the alkane with the dihalide using Br2 and CCl4. Once we have this dihalide, we can bring it back to the alkyne using the sodium amide and water. Remember excess so that we can take off the HBr once and then take off the HBr again. We've talked about how to get from an alkyne to an alkene and from an alkene to an alkane. And now we've talked about how to get from an alkene to an alkyne. It's a two-step process. We have to add halogens across the double bond and then remove them subsequently. We do not know yet how to get from an alkane to an alkene 
and we will learn that in the next chapter. So here's what's included on the yellow sheet that I handed out in class. Here's the one side of the yellow sheet and here's the second side of the yellow sheet. And hopefully some of these things are beginning to make a little more sense as we kind of pull it all together. This chapter, there were a lot of reactions, many of them very similar to the alkene chapter on the green sheet, but many of them also unique. The primary thing we have to know about alkynes that makes them very different, pull off that proton to make an anion that works great as a nucleophile in subsequent SN2 reactions. Okay, that green sheet and now this yellow sheet are going to become your best friends.